the Republicans will put China front and center. When Republicans lost the 2006 midterm election, Democrats picked up a net six seats in the Senate and 30 House seats, President George W. Bush declared it was a thumpin' and pledged to work with both parties. In 1994, when his party lost eight seats in the Senate and 52 in the House, Bill Clinton was more understated, we were held accountable yesterday, he said. That kind of accountability is returning to the White House, again, to the Democrats, on Tuesday. Although Democrats are bracing for bad news, the massive rebuke that comes with a wave election doesn't really arrive until the next day, when a president traditionally appears before reporters to take his medicine in public. That tradition is part of our democracy, of accepting election returns no matter how bad the news. Then, almost as quickly, the political spotlight will shift to the future. The question about the president, will Joe Biden run again, even if his party loses 25 to 40 House seats and the Senate majority? My guess is yes. Big political personalities don't step out of the spotlight, as a rule. They wouldn't have gained the spotlight if they were the retiring types to begin with. Stepping aside is not in their DNA. Such questions do not matter now to voters, who are worried more about record inflation, rising crime and falling school test scores. Even as the machinery of the sure-to-be-fascinating 2024 GOP nominating contest begins to engage, solving more immediate problems should be job one for future House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, Republican California, and Senator Mitch McConnell, Republican Kentucky. The top priority, restocking America's arsenal, especially those parts of it depleted with the shipment of so many weapons and weapon systems to Ukraine and nearby countries. The good news is that Washington's bipartisan support for Kiev has helped to reduce Russian stockpiles of tanks, armored personnel carriers and precision-guided missiles by large, double-digit percentages. The larger, and more important, test comes in preparing for an almost inevitable confrontation with China. Here is one area that McCarthy and McConnell can be relied upon to address and solve by making additions to the defense budget, especially for the Navy and that services submarine fleets. Biden remains the commander-in-chief, but Congress has the primary responsibility authorizing the funds that keep the United States strong. Let us hope the next president does not, as Donald Trump was obliged to do, spend much of his first two Pentagon budgets restocking the cupboard. The generation that stepped forward to fight the global war on terrorism after September 11 has many talented representatives in Congress. More are likely coming in the new class. A second, greatest generation of legislators who have moved from service in uniform to service on the Hill will prove to be strong supporters of national defense. The GOP needs to reclaim Ronald Reagan's mantle as the proponent of a strong and confident America. That reclamation project begins a GOP Congress imprint on an underfunded Pentagon.